Hello everybody, welcome back. This is your Tropical Update for November 8th. We're currently watching Tropical Storm Nicole, which now has hurricane warnings and storm surge warnings up much of Florida and the Bahamas. Again, this is expected to be not the strongest storm we've ever seen, but a very impactful and large one, as is kind of typical of storms this time of year. As you can see, Nicole's wind field uh, and, and cloud field as well, expanding far away from the center with some outer clouds of it already reaching the southeastern United States coast from North Carolina down to Florida and of course over the Bahamas today. Invest 97L is still out there but we don't really care about that because the odds that it form are relatively low um, in, and it's not impacting land at all. So we're watching the coal uh, moderate risk uh, due to tropical storm or hurricane force winds as well as storm surge well into the three to six foot rain certainly possible with this along the northern Bahamas as well as into the Florida and Georgia coastlines. Uh, we're also a slight risk throughout much of the Florida Peninsula mainly due to tropical storm forest winds. Again that wind field is going to be huge on this storm uh, and, and we'll see that here very shortly as well. Again it's not just Florida although the Florida Peninsula is going to bear the brunt of the impacts of the northern Bahamas as well as the rest of the southeastern United States, including Georgia and South Carolina, need to watch this very closely. As we can see, uh, the zoomed in version, it looks much more like a tropical cyclone uh, than maybe the past several days with that convection clearly wrapping around the center. And we could begin to see some sort of eye begin to form with this and thus it would become a hurricane if it strengthens 10 more miles an hour. Currently at 65 miles an hour, as I mentioned, a massive wind field. I think they're expecting it to be about 800 miles wide by the time it makes landfall in Florida. Um, and, and again, a very large system certainly expected here. Flooding is going to be concerned uh, due to Nicole, again, probably up to six, seven, eight inches or so over portions of the northern Bahamas and Florida. Uh, again, it's not a huge convection maker, as you saw. It wasn't. It didn't have those deep red and, and black um, cloud tops like we tend to see in some uh, stronger tropical cyclones. This isn't that, but it does have widespread impacts, especially from wind and thus storm surge as well. Storm surge watches mornings in effect throughout both the Atlantic and Gulf coastlines where tropical storm watches and warnings as well as hurricane watches and warnings are certainly in effect. Again, that very large wind field of tropical storm force winds, as we can see from the warning map, no radar yet on this and no recon planes in, flying in the low level recently. So uh, here is the warning map. And uh, the, that darker, more like maroon color is going to be those tropical storm warnings. That more bright red color is those hurricane warnings. And farther out, um, I don't know, the, the reddish beige, I don't know what else to call it, is those tropical storm warnings. Up the coastline there, you can see small craft advisories and gale warnings, it's coastal flood advisory. And if you look super close, you can see some dark purple there. Those are your storm surge warnings uh, for the, the coast. And we'll discuss all these hazards now. Uh, flooding rain is certainly a concern, not Again, not the biggest flood maker we've ever seen, but certainly could produce flooding, as we see here, moderate flooding, certainly possible, especially along the immediate coastline, uh, generally reaching from Miami to Jacksonville. And again, it's expected into Georgia and South Carolina as well. Storm surge will be a concern, three to five feet generally from uh, the middle of Georgia down into North Palm Beach. And then as we head into the Miami area, say around two feet on the other side of Florida near the Big Bend, we're talking two to four feet with elsewhere like the Tampa Bay, which does not need more rain or more storm surge. We're talking one to three feet in that area and a little bit more heading up towards Indian Pass. Also storm surge expected all the way up into central South Carolina and South Santee River. Uh, again, those risks uh, of storm surge is rather significant as we saw from Hurricane Ian earlier this year. This will not be a Hurricane Ian type storm surge or wind or really any hazard that Ian had, but it is various in the number of hazards we have for Florida. Wind, of course, is a big concern. Those hurricane force winds possible there in red, uh, as well as strong gale force uh, winds possible in orange, tropical storm force winds possible in that yellow area.
And so again, Georgia and South Carolina, as well as much of the Florida Peninsula, out of uh, the story for this. Really, everybody except for the Keys and uh, say, say the western portions of the Panhandle of Florida are saved from this, or, or at least the brunt of the impacts uh, from this storm. Tornado is also going to be concerned uh, throughout the coastline, immediate coastline to the north of the landfall point. Uh, not going to be widespread or anything, but a, a couple or few of them are certainly possible according to the Storm Prediction Center. As we can see here, the official forecast brings it to Category 1 strength, although many of the dynamical models no longer make it reach that strength. We'll make landfall and decrease in strength before rocketing off to the northeast, um, where it will eventually lose its sharp characteristics and begin to strengthen um, and, and grow, as storms tend to do. But it'll be moving so quickly at that point, it won't really matter. It's really the next three days that we're going to be watching this. We have probably... Uh, a day and a half or so until landfall with this storm uh, and then maybe another day of it being tropical and then it will be no longer. According to the European ensembles, this is the only storm we have to talk about. There's still a little bit of a question. Does it recurve right away along the coastline or does it kind of cut into Florida a little bit and then turn northward? But it really doesn't matter uh, in terms of the general impacts with how wide the wind field is. It's not going to sit over the area and produce a whole bunch of rain and it's not really strong enough to do uh, a, a whole bunch of rain, but storm surge is certainly concerned as well as those winds, and those I would say are the two headline concerns here. The GFS in agreement with the European, a bit of a push to the west, uh, taking it over more of Florida, and a couple other systems to watch out there, but nothing too insane and nothing really piquing the interest of myself or the Hurricane Center. Again, the coal is the storm to watch. It's, it's not over yet, although it might be over after this one. Um, as we head into what is soon going to be mid-November uh, in, in the end of hurricane season. So again, watch Nicole, especially if you're in Florida and the southeastern United States. That's all for now. Chris Hickson over there, Catholic Media.